am Chantelle Roberts, and today on The Art of Adjusting, we'll be talking about vet liability and pets. Pets, because they have a special bond with their owners, are considered more than property by a large portion of the population. Therefore, a niche market has sprung up around them. About 167 schools in the United States and in Canada now have animal law studies according to the Animal Legal Defense Fund. However, the history of how animals are seen as property comes from humans' ancient history as a means to a human's end, such as beast of burdens, ability for settlers to earn a living to sustain themselves. And the veterinarian malpractice came up from that of, of taking care of these service animals who uh, service humans. And so the veterinarian malpractice policies, for the most part, don't speak towards a settlement of a human emotional distress at the loss or injury of a pet. And it's further governed by the rules and regulations, which would interpret a contract, which is usually the rules and regulations of the states. So when an adjuster is adjusting a claim regarding vet malpractice, the adjuster's hands could be tied uh, proverbially by common law. Tennessee law, for example, 44-17-403 uh, provides that a person may obtain relief for pain and suffering up to $5,000 as a result of the negligent death of a pet. Unfortunately, the statute is only applicable if the death occurs on the owner's property mm -hmm. And um, generally, that's, of course, not the case for veterinarians because we take our cat or our dog to his office. Um, and it has to be, the animal has to be in control of the owner. So again, you can understand how this may be for a horse or a cow or something to, uh, some kind of animal to that effect. California courts, however, have recognized the emotional bond that humans have with animals and allow owners to obtain at least the cost of the veterinarian's invoice to address the negligent injury or death of a pet as long as the owner's out-of-pocket expenses exceed the pet's market value. Now, the market value is something that is, of course, unique in regards to pets since they are considered to be pieces of property, how do you necessarily adjust that? If you got your pet from a pound, you know, and you paid $60 for that pet uh, because you're supporting the pound or the Humane Society or something to that effect, then um, as a piece of property, that cat or that dog, while they may be worth $20 million to you is not really going to be worth $20 million to uh, the insurance policy. So the way to adjust to these things do little to assuage the pain and the anger that an owner may feel at the loss of their pets. Like any kind of liability, the scope of the veterinarian's professional responsibility is important when the standard of care is applied. The owner must prove the following malpractice elements, which are similar to, like I said, the components of negligence. The veterinarian had a duty of care towards the animal and the veterinarian has accepted that responsibility. The actions or inactions of the vet did not confirm or convey to the professional standard of conduct. The failure to conform to the professional standard was the proximate cause of the injury and the injury resulted in damages, not only to the patient, uh, which would be the animal, but also the owner. Now, California uh, Civil Code 3340 specifically allows for punitive or exemplary damages to be awarded to the owner uh, due to a veterinarian's willful, willful or gross negligence in disregard of humanity. Uh, Kansas law recognizes that veterinarians willful wanton and malicious acts 
could avail the owner to punitive damages, but these are really high bars uh, to reach. However, there are three ways, since I had mentioned that the animals are merely property, no different than a chair or your TV or a desk or the telephone. Um, there, there are, unlike these objects, three ways for an animal to obtain legal rights. It would be through legislation, legislation, excuse me, uh, a favorable precedence in the decision of common law and the introduction of a ballot initiative. Companion animals such as dogs or cats, they're legally considered to be property in most states. And the traditional value of a pet is market value. So the amount of a, the money that a person would pay for the same animal of the same breed condition. And that's really hard for many pet owners to swallow. And the courts wrestle with the concept of a non-human household member, which has no monetary value. Uh, and with reimbursing adequately the human, this dichotomy is, is also present in the settlement valuation for an adjuster, and it's burdensome for the adjuster. But this week on The Art of Adjusting, we have discussed these various ways. There are uh, articles that you can read. I have written an article about this that you can find on my webpage. And this week I discussed vet malpractice and how to adjust a claim involving a pet. Every claim is different and every insurer has different protocols for handling a loss. However, this being in the litigated world we're in, see below for some legalese. Few claims go to a jury trial and picking the expert who has been deposed the most or who has gone to trial the most may not be the correct expert. Failing to have a second set of eyes on the claim in order to save some expenses isn't always the best way to resolve a loss. As an expert witness and former claims adjuster, I am sharing my experiences in the art of adjusting. Thank you for listening. I appreciate your time.